Our world is filled with dead heroes. The Medal of Honor, given for gallantry, selfishness, and courage in battle, has been awarded posthumously 618 times. Historians argue who were the greatest kings, leaders, and presidents, but all of the greats are dead. Plenty of people have tried to be revolutionaries, genuinely working for the betterment of their people and their countries, but all of them are dead or will die. How many of our loved ones lie dead in the graveyard with nothing but our memories and a stone with their name on it to bear witness to the fact that they even existed? No monument or stone or story could encompass all that those people were. And so despite even our best efforts, we cannot remember everything about every hero and loved one who, ever, who has gone ahead of us in death. But his heart beats. Most of us here have been present when someone died. We have held their hand and watched as their chest stopped rising with breath. We may have seen untold horrors upon the battlefield. Some of us may have discovered the victims of murder. We have seen the results of the undertaker's work, process, processing past an open casket to see the visage of someone who we know is no longer there, an empty shell of someone we have loved. But his heart beats. Some of us here may have supported a cause that, with all that we were, we have poured our blood, our sweat, our tears, our youth into causes that we believed in, we have stood for our values, working tirelessly to accomplish the goals of our cause. And then when we have, may have seen that cause fail and die, watch as those around us lost heart and gave up. We were left wondering, was it worth it? What was the point of all of it if all I have are injuries and dead friends? But his heart beats. Oh, to be able to be sure to know if someone was worth our support to know that they will win and that the risk is all worth it, to know for sure that we are supporting the winning horse, the victorious, the victorious warrior, the honorable leader. What would we need to be reassured about? To be able to rest in the safe knowledge that no matter how bad things get, we have already won. But his heart beats. On what was probably a chilly morning in Jerusalem 1,991 years ago, a man lay in a tomb. He had been beaten to a pulp with whips and fists and clubs. He had been nailed to a cross for a crime he did not commit. Not only was his body broken, but his very soul had endured the fullness of the wrath of God the Father. He had carried the sin of every human being who has existed, will exist, and was existing at the time upon himself in that dark moment of battle as he wrestled with death, the devil, and the world. And the battle left his body broken and dead. His soul left his body with his last proclamation that it is finished, and he was left destroyed. His followers who had believed in his cause were scattered and divided. His betrayer was so full of despair that he committed suicide rather than live in his hopelessness and shame. He had loved this man, beloved him to, believed him to be the king, but now hope itself seemed dead. They didn't understand, and the cause of the man in the tomb seemed lost forever. But then, a beat, then another. Blood that had congealed and settled in the body began to flow again. The gouges and marks and holes in his flesh sealed and healed. The breath of life which comes from the Holy Spirit entered his lungs again. His chest, which had been still for three days, rose and then fell, then rose again. His heart beat again and again, a drum driving the forces of evil away and declaring the victory of the king over all creation. He opened his eyes. I like to think that he smiled as he sat up. The tomb opened and he walked out. His heart beats. He spoke to his followers. He taught them what had happened. He told them how their cause was not lost on that day, but rather declared victorious in a sense that mortal man cannot comprehend. He explained that this was always the plan, just as we'd heard in our readings tonight. He told them the full story from Genesis to the day of his death and how it was all foretold. He ate, he drank, and he taught. He made sure they knew the gospel that he had brought about, the gospel that stood in answer to the law that had condemned them. He entrusted them with his word and sent them out to tell all humanity the truth of that great battle. Then he rose into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father, reigning until no enemy is left, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And his heart beats. 
He, together with the Father, sent his Holy Spirit into the world to build his body, the church. He revealed himself to men like Paul, continuously interceding for his saints before the Father, covering their sins with his victorious blood and giving us his righteousness. He awaits with eagerness the day when he will return in glory to judge in glory to finally destroy and defeat death for all eternity, when time itself will no longer exist. He weeps with us in our pain and suffering, for it isn't what he wants for us, but he knows the life that he has given us in our baptism, the life of the world to come, and through it all, his heart beats. We look out upon a world in pain and suffering. No one knows what truth is. No one knows the difference between right and wrong. Children suffer at the hands of their parents. Children die for the sins of adults. Nations render no justice and armies show no mercy. Medicine has started to give up on curing illness, preferring to make money on treating symptoms and encouraging suicide for those who cannot be treated. The world looks for hope but has found none under the sun, despairing of life itself, and tries to rewrite creation in its own image. And we wonder, what are we to do? We remember that his heart beats. That heart that lay dead in the tomb, speared by a Roman lance while he hung from a cross, it beats like a drum of victory. It beats loud and steady in the chest of the God-man, Jesus Christ, and it beats in the hearts of his church. It beats louder than the wails of our suffering. It beats and drowns out the despair of our world. It beats and drives us forward to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations, working diligently in spirit and prayer to proclaim his glory and life to all who would listen. It beats and delivers life and peace and righteousness to his church through the sacraments together with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters of mine, I declare to you tonight the great victory cheer. Jesus Christ is risen. His heart beats in victory. Death itself is defeated. And one day, all those whom we have lost will experience their hearts beating again as well. All who died in Christ's baptism will live again opening their eyes, their chest rising and falling just as his did. And just as his heart beats today, so will our hearts beat for all eternity. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together today. We thank you for the blessing of your church, for the blessing of your son, for his death and resurrection, which brings us the justification of all our sins and the hope of the certain resur resurrection to come when he comes again. Resor restore in us our hope. As we look out upon a broken world, let us know that we rest in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And let us know that his heart beats and that ours will forever once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.